Girl Gaze is a unique project by the Punjab Lalit Kala Academy in collaboration with the Creative Black Country UK. It brings together four photographers, two from India and two from the UK. Uh, the exhibition brings together documentaries, um, video installations, as well as photographs. And uh, the photographers traverse through the lands of UK as well as Punjab to bring us this exhibition. And uh, as part of the exhibition, we have Jocelyn Allen here with us, who worked uh, extensively in Jalandhar to present uh, her part of the exhibition. Welcome to India. Thank Justin. you. <laughs> so tell us uh, a little about yourself first. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was born in Birmingham in England, hmm. and then I've lived in London since 2010. Um, I studied for my master's in photography in 2013-2014 at London College of Communication. Okay. So photography is something that you have studied uh, till your master's degree. Yep. But was it uh, a part of your life from the very beginning or was it just through the education that you got interested in photography? Yeah, my, my nan was always taking pictures, you know, no special occasion needed, as well as my dad. Um, and then when digital cameras came around, my older sister had one. Okay. And then so I used to play with that and then I, I got one as well. So then I decided that I wanted to study it after high school. So this was part of your subject, as part of your education? Yeah. So tell us a little about your practice in photography. You said that you do a lot of portraiture uh, photography. Mm -hmm. And the self is something that you focus a lot in your work. Yeah. So tell us a bit about your work yeah. in photography. Yeah, so in 2010 I finished my BA in photographic art. And my final project was a self-portraiture project. And it was a very therapeutic project for me, and I really enjoyed it. So I've kind of continued making these projects since then. Um, okay. Some of them are quite experimental, but I've been mainly making self-portraiture around themes of body image, self-esteem, hiding and revealing. Okay. And I also do a bit of video work as well, which okay. is quite performative. Yeah. Okay, so this is different from performance art, what yeah. you call performative photography. Is mm -hmm. it different from what you call as performance art in your work? Yeah, most of my performance stuff is video based, so I've never actually done a performance. Okay, so we do, we do photography is what we, as we know it. Yeah. Okay, so when we talk about body image and we talk about self-portraiture, what does it entail? Uh, what does it, what do we as viewers see? Mm -hmm. uh, well, firstly, the work for me is a very therapeutic thing. Um, so for me, it's a lot about learning to love myself and my body, um, accepting myself in life. But then I also hope that it helps other people who have perhaps had these, these struggles. Okay. Um, yeah, low self-esteem, low confidence, things like that. Right. So uh, mostly you photograph yourself or is it that you also reach out to others for this concept? Uh, I've mainly been photographing myself, but then I wanted to start photographing other people. But okay. it's always kind of, it's easy to say that and harder to do. Right. So with a project like this, you know, having the opportunity to make a project, you know, with a deadline and everything is really great. So. So how did this project come to you or did you come to the project? How, how did this happen? Yeah, it was an email out of the blue, which never happens really. Um, I'd had my work at the Photographer's Gallery in London as part of the kind of uh, best of the BA and MA work of that year. Um, so I, own a, the curator, saw my right. work there. Okay. And then from that, my work was shown at the Delhi Photo Festival okay. by a, another Indian, uh, an Indian curator who came. So what was the work there at the gallery, Justin? Uh, it was, the project was called Covering the Carpet. Covering the Carpet. Which is black and white nudes uh, okay. about the female body and kind of the politics of the female body. It's a hiding and revealing project. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here again uh, in this project also it was a female uh, body. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so uh, Iona saw your work there. Yeah. Okay. And tell us a little about how you went uh, because for you, India must be new, though you said that you have read a lot about gender disparity in India mm -hmm. and you have also uh, kind of researched on it also a bit for mm -hmm. the project. Yeah. So uh, did you have a concept in mind uh, when you got this email about the project? Uh, well, I heard that it was about women, which I thought was great because it kind of fits my own work. Mm. So the first kind of research I did was about the, the woman in India. Okay. And in the 2011 census of the Punjab, I found that for every thousand boys that were born, I think it was about 895 girls True. were born. True. So there was this disparity, which I was really interested in. So immediately I knew that I wanted it to be about the daughter in the Punjab. Okay. So was there a method to the entire 
project in the sense did you envision something before you began uh, photographing it did you have people in mind that okay this is what I'm going to talk about or how am I going to translate into photography if you could talk in detail yeah. about how and of course there must be huge challenges because women in Punjab are not very forthcoming mm. about uh, being photographed or talked about so yeah. tell us how did you go about it what was yeah the um, starting the project I was a complete outsider to the Punjab so I didn't you know I pretty much knew nothing about the culture I didn't know any people um, so Create a Black Country initially helped me to find Punjabi women in the black country um, there was a few events so I found a few women that way um, initially, I was focusing on families with a lot of daughters. That was my initial method. Back in the UK? Yeah, in, okay. in the black country. Right. Um, so then I was just meeting these people because with the project, I wanted to get to know people first before photographing them because I wanted them to feel comfortable with me. And I also wanted to get to know them because it's a yes. shared experience. True. Um, so then I photographed people there. I also photographed a, a couple of women who wrote poems for the project. Because it's difficult being an outsider and you know, you have a time frame and sometimes people want to be in the project and they change their minds. So you really have to be open minded. So the project did shift a bit from originally just being uh, families with a lot of daughters. Okay. It opened up a bit. Okay. Okay. And uh, so you began uh, with the UK and then why did you choose Jalandhar? Well, I chose Jalandhar because there was an organization there that I wanted to work with who my producer had meetings with and then after a couple of meetings in Jalandhar they said no, that they didn't want to be in the project. So it was a bit disappointing, but then I also kind of like the, the chance that happens in projects. So we found ourselves in Jalandhar based on this school, but then my producer was amazing because she also knew that they might say no, so she was always prepared for backup plans. Okay. <laughs> yeah, which was great, which was really great. Okay, so did you zero in on a certain number of women for the project? Uh, was it um, so meticulously planned or no? Um, you always try, but it, for me, anyone who wanted to be in the project, they were in the project. Um, because these things, you know, people change their minds, so it really had to just be open-minded about it. But in, in Jalanda, I, I photographed a lot more women just because I was here for a month. And so it was, you know, I had my producer, she was finding people for me. So it was a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the black country, it was a bit more difficult. And oh, really? But I had to travel as well. Like I was going up and mm. down at weekends mm. because for me, it's still a lot of traveling. Mm. So I found being in Jalanda a lot easier. Okay. And also having a producer and a translator. Yes. Because it helps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Made it a bit easier for me. So, uh, what was your um, title or thematic uh, reference uh, for your work? What is it, the title of your uh, work? It's uh, You Will Live in This World as a Daughter. Okay. So, where did this uh, thought come from and how did it uh, translate into photography? Mm. I always like playful titles. Some of my titles in my own work are quite long. I was listening to a song called Middle of the Night okay. by the Soviets, and I've heard the song thousands of times. And I was randomly playing it while trying to think of a title for the project. And there's a line that says, you will live in this house as a daughter. Okay. But I thought that was too constricted, but I like that kind of playful title. So yeah. then I just changed it to world. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what, was, uh, what were you, um, when you got this project, what did you think or what did you want to communicate to whoever uh, saw these photographs? Was there, of course, there is a thought in mind. So what was your first thought when you said, okay, this is my stance or this is what I'm going to show? Yeah, I wanted the project to be quite playful and fit, fit my own aesthetic um, because doing self-portraiture, I have a kind of certain style. But then I was worried about how that would look when I photographed other people. Right. But, so I didn't really want the pictures to be very serious. Right. But underlying is this kind of hmm. ideas about being a daughter and how perhaps the sons are favoured over the daughters, the sons have more opportunities. Mm. If you come from a poor family in India where you only have enough money to send a couple of your kids to school, often the, the sons are favoured over the daughters. Mm. So actually I found that a lot of girls do sports in India yes. just so they can get, you know, have, have the opportunity to go to, to further their education. Right. So was this a learning experience for you also, this project? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, just being in a different culture, learning about a culture that I don't know, so then I can share my knowledge with other people. It's, it's a great experience, and it's the first time I've really had anything like this in my life, which is great. Right. And uh, uh, tell us a little about the photographs now that you have uh, 
um, done than you have exhibited here. Yeah. So how many of them and tell us a little about uh, what was your, uh, as a photographer, mm -hmm. what was the image that you wanted to capture? So when I was photographing people, I was trying to photograph them in a similar style to how I perhaps photograph myself. Right. And quickly this kind of hiding and revealing element came out, which is quite a prevalent theme in my own work as well. But I felt that it really fitted with, with India, with, with the Punjab, because often I'd walk down the street in Jalanda and I wouldn't see any women. Or, you know, they seem to be hidden away. Mm. So some of the pictures you see their faces, yes. some it's the back, some you right. see a little bit. Right. So really that's the theme that goes without the project. Okay. Okay. And uh, what about, um, how, how do you see this translated? Do you want to translate this a little further or just restrict this to a project? Did it give you some ideas for your future work, this project? Mm. Um, well, after working with women, like, I definitely want to make another project about, wi about women. Mm. Um, so I'm making a project about women in Watford, which is just outside of London. Okay. So because I have this project about Punjabi women, then I have a project about Watford women. Right. And then I really want to make projects about other women in different places, because oh, I think... Interesting. It, yeah, it's very different wherever you go. And a place like Watford is very multicultural as well. Okay. People from all over the world. So. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, why photography? In the sense, uh, what does photography give you as, as a person? Mm. And in today's time with digital photography, um, there are so many photographs everywhere. Yeah. Uh, does it... Does it um, trouble you at times and uh, what is uh, it that drives you to through this medium and towards this medium yeah for me just photography my art practice gives me like meaning in life um, a lot of my own work is very therapeutic and just it just feels great for my soul mm. um, and there are a lot of photographers but I think number one I kind of make the work for myself it's something that I really enjoy doing it gives me pleasure and so if other people enjoy it then that's really great and what are the challenges that you face um, as a photographer? Is, as a woman photographer, do you face any challenges yourself or no? Um, early on, I kind of, I've always had like other, other work because in photography and art, you know, the, the money side is a bit, you know, mm. comes and goes. So I've always kind of had a normal job to not worry so much. Right. Um, so perhaps maybe I don't throw myself out there into the photography world as much as I should, but I just need to know that I can pay rent and live <laughs> and, and survive. Right. Um, so do you work? Do you work also uh, yeah. apart from your photography? Yeah, I just have like, I just do like admin work and things okay. like that to keep okay. myself afloat. Yeah. Right, right. And um, what, what, was, uh, what were the similarities that you found between uh, women here and uh, back in your own country? Uh, I just found that people are really confident. I thought maybe with these things that I'd read, perhaps women wouldn't be so confident, but I was really surprised by that. But then maybe it's the people that were in the project as well, because mm. I feel mm. like there were more women that could have been in the project, but had barriers from being in the project, okay. like family. Family. Yeah, things like that. Okay. And so um, how many uh, women did you photograph? And was there a, um, that you selected some and then you didn't? So yeah. what, how was the process of uh, yeah. doing that? I don't even know how many women I photographed. Mm. It must have been at least 60. But then because I started the project in the UK in May and then I came to India in November. Okay. So I was working on the project uh, in the UK and then by the time I, I came here for a month and working that intensely, kind of it changed the project a bit. Okay. And with the project, it's having pictures that kind of fit together. Mm. And also I couldn't have like 100 images in a project. True. So you have to be ruthless and edit, which is a shame. But not everyone can be in, sadly, which is, is a shame. So you worked with, I mean, there are four photographers in the project, mm -hmm. and of course there's one curator. Mm -hmm. So was there a kind of um, a platform for discussions and debates? And uh, were there anything that was op overlapping? And did you, how, how was it to work together with four women mm. and three other women and your curator? What was the experience? And was it collaborative or were you... Uh, immersed in individual mm. projects? It was very much separate just because of logistics because obviously two of them live in India. Though I did meet Andrea when she came to visit in the black country before and Jennifer I knew of her work but we never met so when we found out we we're on this project together we met up a couple of times to just chat about the project and how we were getting on uh, so it was really nice to meet Uzma and then Iona I met early on in the project like for a kind of interview for the project 
Um, but she's really great and she's done so much work for this exhibition and she's made it look amazing, which right. is really good. Right, so, uh, so there wasn't any um, j collaborative theme, no? It was all individual work. Yeah, the main theme was women. Was women. But it's interesting how I think we've all approached it in yes. a totally different way, in different styles, which completely, I think... Completely, completely. Yeah. And what about uh, video photography, if you could talk a little about that? How, how different is it from photography and does it uh, lend itself to a different audience and a different meaning, especially in exhibitions? Yeah, it's very different because obviously in one photograph it's a split second in time, whereas a video is it's very different. Um, most of my own videos, the most recent stuff I've been doing is dancing on YouTube. I have a channel where I dance, which is very different. What is it called? Um, it's under a pseudonym, okay. so it's called Helena Teasdale. Okay. Um, and it's just, a lot of my work is about confidence, and so it was learning to let go and just be myself. Right. So, because it's under a pseudonym, people assume it's me pretending to be a character, but it's not. I didn't want people to Google, you know, my name and see that, and then think, oh, it's just an artist being an artist. True. It's me just, just letting go and sharing songs that I like with other people, and just learning to accept myself. And hmm. Yeah, video is a very different way, because it's harder to control in a way. And, and you do this all by yourself? Yeah, I just do it at home, mainly in my living room. Okay. <laughs> but I have like over a thousand of them. Wow. I've been making it for like five years. Okay. And all on different um, subjects and themes? Oh, th these are just different songs. Different so, songs. So I just dance to different songs, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So this brings out a different side of you altogether. Yeah. And because of that, I've recently started doing improv comedy as well. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have that no, here. No, what is it? Uh, um, so generally there's a group of 10 of you and you get suggestions from the audience. It's kind of like acting, but you just, there's no script. Okay, interesting. So you make it up on the spot and yeah. So right there and there? Yeah. Okay. So it's, yeah. Okay. But it's because of my work and this video stuff that I wouldn't have had the confidence to do it like 10 years ago. Mm. But just over time it builds my confidence and then I just was like, you know what, I think I'd like to try, so let's do it. Okay. <laughs> So what, what do you, how do you see yourself uh, in the few years and are there any projects that you have in mind um, or a dream project or something that you'd really like to work on but you haven't been able to till yet? Oh, it's difficult. Mm. I mean, I'd really love to just keep continuing this pro these projects about women. About women. So I'd just love to make these proje projects in different places. Right. Um, whilst also just continuing my self-portraiture work, really. I don't really have any big dreams. I just really enjoy making the work that I want to make and I'd like to have more time to make the work that I want to make as well. And commercially, is it, um, is it viable for you to do projects on your own or this is something that is a passion so you do it? Yeah, I'd love to like do it as a full-time job but it's, especially living in London, it's so expensive right. and work comes, comes and goes. That's why I kind of just do work that I know is regular. Right, yeah. right. And how was your India experience so far? Yeah, it was great. I mean, I love Indian food. Um, <laughs> like Chandigarh is very different to Jalanda. It's, mm. you know, walking around the parks and doing everything. Um, yeah, it's totally different and I, I, you know, to the UK and I'd love to come back and see some more of India. Wonderful. So it was lovely to speak to you and lots of luck for your future projects. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.